everybody, Arthur here with another unboxing video. Today we have Mafex, Mafex, Mufex, who cares? It's the amazing Spider-Man. And I want to do a huge shout out to Andrew Griffith, Toyco, for allowing me to be able to pre-order this guy in crazy advance. Because, I mean, when this guy was announced, he had pre-orders up, pre-order him at a great price. And now I just see a bunch of people scraping together trying to get a hold of this amazing Spider-Man. Get it? amazing spider-man but either way it comes in this really cool style packaging got spidey right there got all this you get get all this goodies and uh got the amazing spider-man up at the top this guy came quite quick and uh packaged very well that's why it's all super crispy then we get all this on the back and i love this uh this is actually my first mafex i'm going to say mafex even though some people say it's mafex or whatever uh, my first mafex figure and i love the fact that they're actually showing the figure on the back but paints are a little bit different we get some nice uh characters there some hieroglyphics and then uh more hieroglyphics and <laughs> actually it's probably japanese um and then we got Spidey right there. Uh, anybody looking for it, here's an upside down UPC. Here's a UPC, but your, your best bet is you're going to want to order this guy off the internet. But hopefully you can get him at a reasonable rate and not, you know, the crazy increase in price because of the demand for this figure. But let's get Peter Parker out of the package. This Spider-Man is so awesome. And you, you can even say pretty damn amazing because it is a awesome awesome representation of spider-man one thing out of the package i did notice is that the blue and the red on the actual figure advertised on the package is a lot different than what we actually received either it's because of the washes or just different plastic he does come equipped with some open hands and he comes with a buttload of accessories uh one of those accessories is the good old mafex flight stand stand in general, whatever you want to call it, we get a stand, which is awesome. You can never have too many stands for figures. Now, with his hands, he comes with a bunch of them, and I do mean a bunch. So one of these hands that he gets, he gets these two uh, a pair, should I say, of thumbs up hands. They look awesome. They got sculpted in webbing, the wash on them. It's just a wash and sculpt. The sculpt is great. This one's got some weird, what is that? Looks nasty, some white, looks like he was playing in poop. Uh, but these aren't just thumb up hands, these are actually web swinging hands. You got the holes there, hold on to the webs, which spoils a little bit of what other accessories he comes with. So we get some thumb up hands, I'll put them over here more towards the figure. Um, and of course, when you're dealing with Spider-Man, and he is a hero, he's got to fight. You can't fight unless you throw some fists. So we get some nice fisted hands. Again, they're sculpted nice. Got the wash over them. Just look really, really nice and clean. So another pair of hands. Like it's just the amount of hands is insane, but it's going to be great for all you articulated comic book artists out there. And uh, you also got to get your whipping hands. You get a pair of these. They look really good. I got some more. I don't know what that is. Some weird spots on the hands. So, whipping hand looks good, but I don't know what that other spot is. Um, then we get sculpted in webbing as well. So that's on all hands. So I will stop mentioning sculpted on webbing. But his body is sculpted on webbing as well. So, we also receive a pair of wall crawling hands. He's focusing on Spidey. Looking really nice. And then the reason I invested into this, because this is really the trigger point, not because it was a McFarlane Spidey, but come on. We get wall crawly hands that have magnets built into them. And that is awesome. I am a huge, like it sends me back to like, the 90s, 80s, where we had like little figures had magnets in their feet and stuff like that. I think that is super cool. And speaking of feet, we get alternate little boots. 
little shoes that we can swap out. And they got dual magnets in there. Looking great. And they actually, look at that, connect very well. Then we get into a little bit more of other accessories. He does come with a unmat, like a his mask separately. I guess he can hold on to it. It's a hard plastic. But uh, I'm going to show you an example. I mean, it's sculpted well. It's a little slippery bugger. But uh, it's not, not horrible. But I will... Uh, see, it keeps falling out of my hand. It's hard to show it off. It's very small. And he comes with uh, an alternate head. He comes with a couple. This one has more of the I guess, smaller eyes. I'm going to use the one that's actually on him because I think it looks better. But again, that's sculpted very nicely. Paints on point. But then I want to bring this up. This is him taking his mask off versus him wearing the mask. Come on, forget it. There it goes. That's like a huge difference. Why'd they do that? Does the eyes, does the mask stretch out that much? Like if this was all like a just normal like I don't know, like a Spanx, I guess it could stretch out, but to me, like those eyes are no nowhere near accurate in size. And since they look like they're separate pieces, I would assume that this part should be a lot bigger. So I feel they dropped the ball on this one. A good idea, but I feel like they could have done a better job on that. Because it just doesn't seem scale. Then we get his Peter Parker head, which isn't too bad. It's not bad at all. It's got those baby blues. It's like they did washes on everything, and there's not much of any wash on his face, which gives him sort of that mannequin look a little bit, but it's it's not a bad Peter Parker. Didn't know he uh he liked his bangs like that. So and then we get into more accessories. So we get a a web net type thing going on. Webbing is sculpted very nice. It's not bad at all. We get some, this would be, I guess, the swinging web. There's a little spot where you plug it into his hands. We get some dual flipping webbing. It's got the little wrist things, which I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I'm a fan of the wrist things because I feel like I wish it just had like an angle that plugged in and a port in his wrist to plug these in. I think it would look a lot better. And then we get some shorter flipping. So the beginning part of the flip, another one has it to where it extends out, but nice. It's got a little bit of glob at the tip, so it's thicker at the tip. Thins out, looking fantastic. Let's dive into the figure because I know that's what everybody's here about besides all the accessories. This figure is gorgeous. I can't say it enough. And if you've watched other reviews, which I'm sure you guys may have, I mean, I've never, I, I haven't heard, heard any really much negative on this figure. He looks amazing. I know it's not completely 100% uh, McFarlane accurate because he had some extra points going on with the eyes and everything. So he's not 100% McFarlane, but this is pretty darn close. And it looks looks great again you get all this stuff sculpted the the washes the coloring the fading it looks great i love the fact that this is sculpted i love the sculpted in spiders as opposed to painted on like both are sculpted in this is that nice like metallic blue with a little bit of a wash over it it's everything about this guy now articulation wise let's dive into it his head can look down quite a bit. He can look separately on his neck, and the neck itself can move. So he can actually look up quite a bit. A um, little bit weird, he has a little bit of a lippage on his head. You can see it, um, but it's not something that's totally distracting. But yeah, some really good motion, attitude like crazy. I mean, 
it's it's a nice feeling figure you know when you're moving them around you get them into those poses uh, arms can go up bicep swivel double jointed elbow got the hinge at the wrist and the wrist can rotate but we also get the really nice butterfly in there as well looking really nice and one thing i noticed looking at this figure what do you what do you guys see what do you guys see or what don't you see peg holes you don't have these nasty peg holes look at this hasbro if you guys are watching this doubt you are definitely take a like figure out how they're doing this no peg holes in these guys um we get really good range of motion with this guy because you get this going on you know just be rocking it out but it leans back a little bit of blue coming through which is a little weird leans forward quite a bit gives that gap a little quite a bit um, but then he also has a ball down at the bottom too to where he can just have really good range of motion and that is the awesome part about this it is awesome and his legs have the drop down hips if you're familiar with sh figure arts you know you can bring them back up his hips can go out straight van dam a straight van dam pose awesome no thigh cut which is okay because i don't really i don't feel like I, I we need it with this Double jointed knee, no peg holes. Look how beautiful that makes a figure look without peg holes. No boot swivel. I would have thought it would have bent there, but it just bends right here at the ankle. You get the pivot going on too, a little bit going. There it goes. Then you get that toe bend, which tight toe bend, but you get a toe bend. So very, very awesome articulation out of this guy. And it's, I don't know, and he feels very solid. And I think definitely without the peg holes and everything, it, it makes this figure have the appealing, or the appeal, the look of just being a bit more solid figure too. I definitely like it. But I want to bring up this other head. So you can size, see these side by side. Some of you might see it and be like, I don't really see a difference. But there you go. It's just the eyes a little bit open where I like this one more. So I'm probably not going to use this head at all. So definitely some cool stuff there. And let's go ahead and change out his head. So we got to change this out. And I got to... Oh, it's a two-parter. All right, so you got to pop his neck out. Don't pop his head back on. And uh, so he has a neck and head. And then you pop the neck and then look the... Pop in there. Come on. Okay, I guess it just doesn't make a pop noise. But then you can have him without his mask. It's weird. It's almost like the uh, the neck here is a brighter red than his body. That's bizarre. And I think these are the hands that actually used to hold this... This mask, I guess, maybe. Doesn't really want to hold it. Oh, you can hold it like this, I guess, but that just doesn't look right. It's like he's has a taco. And again, the thing's a slippery bugger. How is this thing supposed to be held? Like, I guess, like, I guess you can hold it like that. I don't know. It just, again, it keeps slipping out. It's just a hard chunk piece of plastic. But I want to get this guy in some poses. And, uh, but I mean, it's, it's awesome. And then we'll do a comparison to Pizza Spidey. Just sort of show them side by side and stuff. But let's, let's get them in some crazy poses. Maybe bust out that stand and see what we can do with them. So you can actually get them crouched down all wall crawling very nicely. I mean, that's the great thing about it is. And, and the fingers don't feel like they're going to give away. So actually you can balance and support the weight of the figure. 
looking very, very awesome. You also can have them all crouched down and flipping. I have both the long and the short webbing coming out. So you can get some really nice shots with that. Now, one thing I'm going to show you is that uh, they will be loose because technically they don't want to stay on. Normally, you would just pop it on and oops, just totally drop that one. And uh, you're supposed to really make this part sort of go over the ball. And it'll pop on and, you know, be snug a little bit. It's all blurry. You guys can't see what I'm doing. So there we go. So the webbing sort of mounts over the ball. You have to sort of work at it. But sometimes it'll pop off and then it will spin around and stuff like that. So these might need heated up to get them to sort of form and stay where they need to be in order to get that flipping hand just to give you guys that heads up. Because you can see over here, it's there but it's still you know a little loose now the flight stand isn't bad especially when you get them into these web swinging poses i just wish that they had ratchets in these because i feel over time if you're posing and stuff that they're gonna give or just get loose but i mean this this figure is so fun and you can see you know with the webbing yeah it's short for swinging but when i get it out of frame it almost looks like he is swinging into something that is, you know, his web's beyond that. So that's what you can do with some of these shots that you can get. Just make sure that that webbing is going off of frame and it looks gorgeous. That looks so, so good. So good. Now, the main reason I, I was interested is because he had magnets in his feet and this is a big chunk of metal. He has four magnets in feet. I even put them sideways. And he sort of stands there. And if you hold him upside down, it, it doesn't really support it. Like, you can get it to a little bit, but the, bat, the, the actual magnets are weak. Very, very weak, which is disappointing. I was expecting them to be a lot stronger magnets to where if I wanted him to hang with one hand, that he could, but he can't. And, I mean, I've tried it with all different types of metal. So, it's like, in order for him to be fully utilized, you want to use probably as much of the magnets in his hands, feet, as possible. But, granted, I had all four of these on that metal thing. And you saw that he just sort of plopped down. I don't understand why they did that. What is there regulation of how strong of magnets you can actually use? Because I would rather have some very strong magnets to where I can put him on anything metal have him hang there if I want him set up there for 15 years 20 years whatever you should be able to pose it but I mean this is mainly like something you put I guess use for a fridge and that's if he'd even stay up I mean opening a fridge closing a fridge he'd eventually slide down or just fall off so that's that's a pretty big disappointment um I'd say that's the main disappointment besides the mask uh his loose mask looking super tiny the magnets just to, for me just don't work as well as I was expecting them to work now, one thing I would have liked to have seen um, with this figure, you can see the pegs that go into the hands are very tiny. So when you peg it in, I mean, it works and everything, but I could see somebody breaking those off. For the cost of this figure, I don't understand why they wouldn't have tossed in a couple of those in case they broke. Um, because this figure wasn't like a super expensive figure, but it wasn't uh, an inexpensive figure either. I mean, the price point... Um, on these guys can be a little bit high. Granted, you know, other uh, Mafex figures never, it wasn't even close to this price. So it's pretty crazy um, that they wouldn't have gave us those because I can just feel somebody's getting this and playing around, posing, and all of a sudden it's like snap. Then, then you're reaching out and hopefully getting it through the manufacturer. I'm not too sure how that would work if they'd even do that. Um, one thing also that I didn't share with you guys is that this thing this web right here actually uh can connect to this little plastic nipple and then this plastic nipple ends up going into this stand so you can have it like you just shot it or you know hanging from it i don't know it's something you can do it's neat you can never have too many effects or webs now it won't come off
I'm having too much fun with this figure. I mean, it is it is a very fun figure to pose. As you can see, I'm using that net one that I didn't think I would use. This one actually works very well for a suspended upside down web. When it boils down to this level of figure, meaning the cost, the expense, you know, you see what you get. You get your money's worth. I mean, you definitely get a bunch of accessories, alternate heads, a bunch of webbing, stand. So you're really seeing that you're getting your dollar's worth out of it. But it's also comparison time. So I wanted to bring out, you know, a pizza Spidey just so you can really see, you know, the difference. Um, both of them are almost the same height this one's actually taller but the proportions on the mafex to me are a lot more accurate he has this crazy long torso that could shrink down he'd be more at that height but you could just see everything like the hips on this guy the sculpt work shoulders the head Everything looks how it should. Um, granted, it does have a little bit of a bulbous part at the end. Um, but it's not bad at all. This one's really shiny. A lot of paint apps. Not any sculpted lines or sculpted spiders. Um, and this area is just wonky on this guy. The hip area. So, this is it. A Legends and a Mafex. You know? quadruple the price i do believe if not a little bit more i think it's it's almost five times the cost <laughs> for this guy compared to him but you see where your dollar really goes spite even looks good with miscellaneous props and accessories as well um i would have liked to have seen a alternate head where his mask was halfway down um instead of fully off and I would have liked to have seen some sort of like spider sense effect. I mean, that would have been really a nice thing to have with this figure as well. But those are just minor little suggestions that I wish would have been with this figure. But the figure I am not disappointed with. I love it. It is a awesome Spider-Man. And if you're a Spider-Man fan, you probably want to snag this guy. Or if you just need to have that ultimate McFarlane feeling Spidey, like this is it. Like I... I I'm very impressed with what Mafex actually has done. And, uh, you know, again, a huge shout out for Toyco. You know, when I talk to you guys about those pre-order groups, you know, with Toyco and the community, that's how I was able to pre-order this guy. You know, he announced, uh, when this guy was announced, he announced he was getting them in Venom. And I made sure I said, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely wanting one. And when they come out, you pay, get it shipped came to my house it was awesome i wasn't worried about not getting one and uh that's that's a big thing about these groups i'm not just telling you because i want you to you know waste your time they're actually good groups to be a part of but either way that sums up my unboxing and review of mafex's or mafex the amazing spider-man figure if you guys like what you saw please hit that thumbs up Subscribe to me if you're new to my channel because I'm always pumping out content varieties of all different types of figures. And check out Toyco Toys and Collectibles. The Facebook groups are down below. You got the community where you interact with your fellow nerd, talk figures, trade figures, have a good time. The second one's the pre-order group. So you can make sure you're in the know about these figures. I knew about this guy like when they announced it. So... That's a good thing about that pre-order group because I also got an amazing price on it. I wasn't paying e eBay prices or scalper prices. So definitely check out both the groups. Join up. And I want you guys to have the best luck hunting. Keep on collecting and have a beautiful day.